Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Welcome, everyone. It's great to see everybody. This is a special day. Usually the priests are on retreat, and uh, usually so we don't get a chance, we usually ce celebrate this uh, service communally, so we're kind of celebrating all the priests of the diocese. It was kind of unusual to be able to have this uh, memorial of Our Lady of Sorrows and to celebrate it, especially after I had served about well, four years in, in Ladysmith with the uh, Servites there, of course, who have a devotion to Our Lady of Sorrows and the Seven Dolors, the Seven Sorrows. The Seven Sorrows, if I remember right, they were uh, completed. The Seven Sorrow came about, I believe, in the, towards the end of the 14th century. So it's been around for quite some time, that, that prayer, and the way in which uh, the Servites have embraced it so much. But as we prepare to enter more deeply into these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father and intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who will that when your son was lifted high on the cross, his mother should stand close by and share his suffering, grant that your church, participating with the Virgin Mary in the Passion of Christ, may merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated for our readings. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son, though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. Save me, O Lord, in your kindness. Save me, O Lord, in your kindness. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me. Make haste to deliver me. Save me, O Lord, in your kindness. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. You are my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, you will lead and guide me. Save me, O Lord, in your kindness. You will free me from the snares they set for me, for you are my refuge. 
Into your hands I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. Save me, O Lord, in your kindness. But my way is trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. In your hands is my destiny. Rescue me from the clutches of my enemies and my persecutors. Save me, O Lord, in your kindness. How great is your goodness, O Lord, which you have in store for those who fear you, and which, toward those who take refuge in you, you show in the sight of the children of men. Save me, O Lord, in your kindness. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are you, O Virgin Mary. Without dying, you won the martyr's crown beneath the cross of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. It's interesting. I've been doing a, uh, a retreat at home, or at the rectory, I should say, and uh, listening to the speaker there. And so much of it is about that love of God and understanding that love of God. And how that love comes to us. And I couldn't help but think about what today's memorial with Mary and the way in which that love that she knew of Christ and how we can grow in that understanding of the love. Can we ever love like she can? We strive to do that, don't we? She shows us how to do it. She asks us to follow along with the graces that Christ has won for us and incorporate them into our lives because Christ loved us so much. I couldn't help but notice in this gospel passage, it's the 19th chapter of John's gospel. A few chapters earlier, of course, this is John's version of the Last Supper. And it's that prayer where Jesus is uh, praying to the Father for his disciples in the 17th chapter that they may know the love that is between you and me, Father, so that the love that is in you may also be in them. Mary had an understanding of that love. Of course, the disciples had to grow in that love, just like we have to grow in that understanding of that love. At the foot of the cross here, Jesus, right before he's about ready to expire, says, woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, behold your mother. Stop and think about that. First off, Mary is standing there, witnessing everything that her son has gone through everything that she's gone through in her life because she said yes to God. That's the beauty of the seven dollars, isn't it? 
the presentation of the child Jesus in the temple, the first one. And a sword shall pierce your heart also. Flight into the Egypt. A madman is after them to kill the child. And they have to flee down into Egypt. Quickly leave everything behind. And then, of course, it's the finding of the child Jesus in the temple. Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? And then it continues on with all the uh, other mysteries, the four other mysteries, until the death of Jesus, placing him in the tomb. Mary now is standing at the foot of the cross. She recognizes the love that God has for humanity because she, God has asked her to be the mother of God and the love that goes along with it, the love that is required to go along with it. And now the love of her life, the love of her soul, is hung up on a cross because of sin. The sins of the world, our sins. And now she says, Jesus says, behold your son. John was a sinner just like us. Son, behold your mother, a mother that's perfect, the one that has taught, the, uh, the, of the one who helped out in creation, the one who was part of creation, that created the world. And now she's looking at this person alongside of him. She's looking to us. She doesn't say anything. She just responds to God's will. How much we can learn from Mary if we but respond to God's will in our lives and to see that love that she pours out into our lives because she's taught her, helped to teach her son just as her son teaches us and taught her. But it's all about that love that God has for us. That love that God wishes to pour into each and every one of our hearts. To understand that great mystery of who Christ is and the graces and the gifts that he has won for us. No more greater places have played out than here in the Mass. Because all graces flow in and through the Mass. Why? because it's the life of Christ. We read his life in the scriptures. We consume him in his flesh and body and flesh. So much graces that are given to us. But it's up to us to meditate upon them, to contemplate them, to incorporate them into our lives. Because the Son of God has chosen to come into the world through a great vessel, the greatest vessel that he has ever created, and that was Mary. And she wishes nothing more than to show us her son, because we are also his, her sons and daughters, because Christ has given her to us off of the cross. May we continue to grow in that understanding of the love that God has for us and what was won for us as Christ hung upon that cross. But not only that, because he decided to rise on the third day. Because that's the most important part of it, is to look towards the resurrection, what God has prepared for us, and the love that awaits us as we grab hold of the graces that he bestows upon us in this life so that we can be with him for all eternity.
in that life which is yet to come. Let's offer our prayers. On behalf of the needs of the world and bring them before our loving God. We pray for the church. May the Lord, the giver of all spiritual gifts, bestow on her every good thing. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for our civil leaders. May God shepherd them in their governance of those whom they serve. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for those who grieve. May they find solace through the intercession of Mary, Our Lady of Sorrows. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered here in this holy place, may the Lord continue to help us grow closer to him in all that we do. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died, may their souls be received into the eternal life and peace of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. For Father James Vanney, whom we remember at this Mass, let us pray to the Lord. Let's also pray for all those who are suffering in any, diff any different way, many different ways, uh, be it the, from uh, surgeries or those that are still suffering from the loss of loved ones. Let us pray to the Lord. Let's also pray for all the people that are out west who are suffering so much because of the fires out there uh, and those that have lost lives. Let us pray to the Lord and the people down south with the hurricane coming in, uh, that they be protected and watched over. Let us pray to the Lord. Let's also pray for ourselves, that we grow closer to that love of Christ and that love that Mary wishes to show us. Let us pray to the Lord. And let's pray together the prayer for vocations. Oh God, we earnestly ask you to bless our diocese with many priests, brothers, sisters, and deacons who will love you with their whole mind and heart and gladly spend their entire lives serving your church and making you known and loved. Bless our families, bless our children, and choose from our homes those needed for your work. Mary, Queen of the clergy, pray for us. Pray for our priests, religious and deacons, obtain for us many more. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, hear the prayers we bring before you today through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Five, the mystery of this water and wine may have come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O merciful God, to the praise of your name, the prayers and sacrificial offerings which we bring to you as we venerate the Blessed Virgin Mary whom you graciously gave to us as a most devoted mother when she stood by the cross of Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on the feast day of the Blessed Ever-Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and given you thanks. He said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way when supper was ended. He took the chalice and given you thanks. He said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saints Basil and Benedict, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and James our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespassed against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy Eucharist. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
communion antiphon. Rejoice when you share in the sufferings of Christ, that you may also rejoice exultantly when his glory is revealed. Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of eternal redemption, we humbly ask, O Lord, that honoring how the Blessed Virgin Mary suffered with her Son, we may complete in ourselves for what, Christ, what the Church's sake, what is lacking in the sufferings of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Maybe just an announcement with, or uh, help to explain with a little things. I think a lot of people notice that uh, the dispensation is, is being lifted for uh, uh, attendance on, um, on Sunday Mass. So people are going to be required to come. That's for people that, whose immune system is not compromised or that is not advanced in years. So we have to take that into consideration uh, where we are or even the people in our household because we never want to put anybody in danger. So that's something to, to think about. Uh, also, uh, what else was I going to mention? People have asked about the occupancy of the church and stuff with, with the amount of people that are there. Of course, we can only have 20%, 5% of what the occupancy of the church is. So if somebody comes in the building, is, if it's full up to occupancy, they fulfilled their obligation. They have, tempt, attempt, have attempted to come to Mass. So that obligation is, is, is uh, been lifted on that also. Of course, we'll try to accommodate everybody as the situation evolves and as things develop and stuff like that. We'll continue to make other changes and stuff too. So, but uh, it's a matter of uh, thinking about which Mass you're going to attend to. I know the 930 is probably the most well-attended Mass that is here in S getting right up to occupancy there. So whether or not we'll have to add another mass, I'm not sure yet. We're still working that through. So trying to help out with that. And what it's meant to do also, if, any, if you know anybody that has fears over it uh, for coming to mass, uh, have them come, give me a call. And I'll try to put those fears at ease and stuff like that too. It's also to recognize the church here, the way we, in which we've been doing it, is a safe way of doing it. We've shown that with the way in which uh, we've been presenting it at Mass and stuff like that, with all the sanitizing that's going on and the way in which the communion is distributed. So, With that, bow down for God's blessing. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, willed in his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessing. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. May you, who have devoutly gathered on this day, carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace.